Entrepreneurship is uh, an idea which comes from the heart but gets defined by the brain. So a lot of people have dreams. A lot of us have dreams and a few of us take the dreams and make it practically implementable. That's where entrepreneurship stands out from making an idea work. It's not just about making an idea work, it's about making a dream work and transform not only yourself but the people around you which means it could be a society you are impacting, it could be a college students you are impacting, it could be corporates you are impacting, any set of people who you are impacting should be transformed by your idea. My uh, schooling was throughout in Chennai and uh, I did an engineering in the University of Madras in Computer Science and then I went out to do an MBA in International Business from the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade in Delhi and uh, all my life I have been a hardcore software professional uh, but along with my life as a software professional I have always been an actor on stage so uh, the left and right brain was always part of my life as much as I loved doing software I loved going out in the evening to do my plays so this is actually a deadly combination if you can get your creative side also juiced up along with your intellectual business and, and a cognitive side which is computer science and if that clash works answers happen and I think at, during the period I've always been interested in doing something on my own it's only the last four or five years of my career in software I realized that by nature I'd like to own things and create things rather than serve somebody else and all good things need a little bit of gestation time needs a bit of planning needs a bit of support and I needed the support of two of my co-founders so technically this is a three-man entrepreneurship and so the three forces came together and voila two and a half years back our business training sideways was born I would like to credit that to a couple of my bosses I worked with uh, in uh, Cognizant where the culture and Cognizant among the software companies I worked I am very proud to have been part of Cognizant I am lucky to say that today they are my clients now I had bosses there who encouraged us to think on our own even though we were working in the organization we were running many businesses I was in charge of a certain group within Cognizant and my job was to transform them in the area of innovation and ideation so in a way I was an incubated business setting within Cognizant encouraged by my bosses and even though I was paid a salary every month the ideas were mine and nobody stopped me saying you can't do this you can't do that that's why I think I got my initial ideas of wanting to do something on my own the other source of entrepreneurship was the fact that we've been running a successful theater group for a long time in Chennai and uh, that theater group itself is an entrepreneurship though I was involved with them only as an actor I've seen the theater group grow from day zero to today where it is and I've been part of some of the decision making and I realized what those two guys who started the theatre company, who have joined with me to start this company, how they thought and how they inspired me a lot to think on entrepreneurship. And I think the combination of the fact that uh, my bosses at workplace who encouraged me to think on my own and create my own mini businesses within the organization and these two friends with whom I started this business, they already had started a, uh, their own entrepreneurship business in theatre. This combination made sure that my mind was always thinking about doing something independently and transforming people around me. The organization is called Sideways Training. The brand Sideways, uh, what we tell people is, we look at trainings that are hard care. So add another filter. Should training be classroom based with powerpoints and people sitting on chairs and tables and writing notes? That is also training. But what is, what, what is training? There is knowledge gathering, there is skills training and there is practical application. Knowledge comes by living. Skills come by training. But the only way you can actually experience the skill is by doing it. So we wanted to cut off this sitting to PowerPoint presentations and lectures. What if I make you guys do what you're learning rather than listen to what you're supposed to learn? What if I can make you perform what you're learning? What if I make you perform uh, uh, leadership uh, skills? What if I make you perform strategic strategy skills? What if I make you perform uh, manager uh, and employee discussions as a performance? When I say performance, I'm not just talking about acting. It could be acting, it could be dance, it could be music, it could be cooking, it could be yoga, it could be band, baja, bharat. Everywhere around us, people are performing things. Arts is there everywhere. What can I do to make the arts, which is so intrinsically part of us, make a difference to the way you learn things? So our business is mapping the arts to management education and creating a system by which I give you tangible knowledge to all the corporates right from team building to understanding the vision statement to strategizing to leadership to innovation to performance discussions to man management to conflict management to communication skills all these things can be beautifully facilitated I don't want to use the word taught facilitated using arts as a medium so that is our canvas under which we make people perform these art forms but learning these management skills so around 2005-2006 apart from doing plays we used to conduct theater workshops for people on the weekends 
we were just doing acting workshops and most of the participants were typically young corporates or college students who used to come for these workshops. Now during the trainings or during these workshops, the feedback we were getting was, yes, we are learning acting, but we are learning much more. We are learning management skills, we are learning a lot of management skills, we are learning uh, thinking on the feet, we are learning about strategy under pressure. They were, they were giving me feedback that these things is something which they use in daily work or at college life, not just in the acting space. And that's when we realized that, hey, why should we just stick ourselves to doing acting training? We can use acting or theatre as a backdrop and why can't we train management people is how we started in 2006. But over time we realized that why should it be only theatre and acting? Why can't I think of any art form? Any art form is a fully immersible art form. Dance can teach you a lot about business strategy. Music can te teach you a lot about uh, leadership. Band Baja Bara can te teach you a lot about client communication skills. You'll be surprised to know that everywhere in life when we do certain things, we are actually doing a lot of management. Whether it's your mom work, work at home doing her work, there's a lot of management. Pressure time, resource, budget, quality management happens all the time. So we realize that all of us have been subject to training in our corporate worlds where we've been sitting in training programs and sitting and sitting and sitting and yeah, I, I remember 20% of what I was taught in, in the training program. I'm not blaming them, maybe I'll blame myself, but the point is I'm sure there are a lot of people like me, even in classrooms, I'm sure when you go to your classes in your engineering and all that, how much do you really learn by just sitting? You have to go back and study. Why, why, why is it? Because we don't want to listen. Because it's a static activity. We want to actually practically do it. How can I practically do it? That is where the idea came. Training, why training? Because for me what is very important is whatever I do should transform some form of society. And the society which is very close to me is two. One is college students, one is the young corporates who are coming into a new world. How can I transform them? I cannot pay them multi-million dollar salaries. Can I equip them in things which are very important, which are not focused on by most people? People are expected to know these things as they work. Can I transform them? Can I make them believe that their work is something which is absolute fun? It's just the way they look at it. It's not about, oh my God, do I have to go to office every day? If you're an artist, the first thing you'll do is smile when you are under pressure. That's what we're trying to teach people. And so our job was transformation and training for me is something I love doing. In fact, acting and training are very close to each other. That they're probably the very two close professions. You're playing a role, you're transforming somebody else, or entertaining, or engaging, or educating somebody else. You have a script which you tend to improvise, and you have an audience in front of you. It's more or less the same. The company is not two and a half years old, but the seed for thought for this company was set in uh, probably 2009. So, though in the first couple of years we were just mulling about the idea of training, and see, it's also important that when you start a business, you need like minded investors. Uh, the investment. Who will invest in a business which is so niche and looks sound so vague, so intangible? So you needed like-minded people to do that. So it is a and to go and tell people, even though people like us, they need to have a solid business plan in front of us. So we need to have a solid plan. It can't just be a dream. It has to have a plan which shows results every year or every quarter. So we had to create the plan and go and present it to investors. So it took about three and a half years to four years of a planning. And when I say three and a half years or four years, I'm saying that all the time we were not doing only this, we were doing other things. As I told you, I was in corporate, my two co-founders were running the theatre company. But three and a half years, it's been mulling in our mind. The last one year before we started training sideways is where we actually started putting a lot of thought into it, worked hard, created a business plan, looked around, presented it to a couple of investors. And then we had to set up infrastructure, then we had to set up pedagogy, methodologies. So we came up with two or three methodologies which are theatre based, which we are comfortable with and started saying that we'll create it on the flow. It's not like we created all the training programs and then started the company. We had only two or three modules ready. But we believed in the fact that we are all performers and I'm from a corporate background. I know the bridge between corporate and art. So we are actually in this space between arts and management and I'm in that space already. And I believed and trusted my co-founders and the one employee we hired. We knew that we can create on, we know, we, we, we now know the, the masala behind it. We know what is the canvas, which is art. It's a question of transforming the art and mapping to a business requirement. So I would say about two and a half to three years of planning happened before the baby was born. Getting the right investors, uh, getting clients, because how many people are going to believe that this kind of training actually works? Unless we have a, an approximate list of potential clients, there's no point starting a business and then hunting for clients. So getting a potential list of clients, handing, getting the right uh, investors, and finally we got the, probably the best people who can invest in us. And then identifying other people who can join our organization who also think as passionately as us. You must also have an artistic background, you must also be able to train well and you must also be as passionate about because it's a startup, it's not an established company. St Founders always have the passion because it's our baby. 
A person coming in may not have the passion because he or she has not founded the company. But how can I get the right kind of a person? It can't be anybody walking into my organization and it, it, in no, not any trainer can do this training. It's not a question of skill, it's a question of passion, it's from the heart. You must believe you're transforming and startup takes a long time to make money. So you must come in knowing that eventually it will happen but that's not the first thing we are offering. So the challenge was that. Office space. Do we take a rented space? Do we share the space with other people? Do we have enough? Do, are we going to... So uh, it's like building a house or you know right from the plumbing works to the right shade of the windows to put... I think the biggest challenge for us was to who will buy our idea from the customer's perspective and which are the right investors who will trust us and who are the people we are going to work with. So these were the probably the, the biggest challenges that we had. Not so much on the design or the implementation side which we were very confident with. You know, uh, believe it or not, it was it's not it has not been as difficult as we thought it would be. In the first five, six months it was. Um, people were, were like, you know, very sweet to us because they, they knew us from other backgrounds. So they smiled, listened to us, but they didn't give a damn to what we were saying because I mean, don't tell me that through, through dance you can teach me project management. Oh, sounds cute, but it's not going to work. That's the reaction we used to get. But once a couple of clients started rolling, enough and more people are calling us. It's not just for us wanting to go and meet people. There are enough and more references which are happening, but people are calling. It's not, I'm not saying that we are doing a fantastic job and people are calling us. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that people have realized that alternate ways of training, of immersive experiential training is the way to go. So they've realized, so I'm telling you, because of what we are doing, a lot more people are going to get into this kind of alternate means of training are going to benefit. And when my, when is my company doing well is when I have 10 other people who are competing with me. That's when my company is doing well, not when I'm the king of my jungle. So the mindset of people, because I think that I, more open-minded people running HRs and training uh, functions in companies today, and they are willing to listen to our different ideas and some people are pretty desperate because they know that the current methods are not always very effective. There are certain things we can we still have to do through the traditional way of training. I, I accept it's not everything can be done this way. There are certain facets which have to be done through traditional ways. But the first six months where we were challenged to even meet people, today that is not our challenge. People are willing to listen to us. But it's the cycles of training and budgets and things which finally decide whether the training happens or not. The challenge today for us is not convincing people about our training. The challenge today is to have this business sustainable month after month, year after year. Uh, we've covered uh, most of the metros in India and some of the small towns. In fact, um, I would say Ahmedabad and Gurgaon and places like that are also big, big, uh, big, big places for us. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay, uh, Hyderabad, um, going to do Jaipur very soon, Cochin. We, we've covered all over India and if everything goes well in the next six months, we'll probably be covering our first client out of India. Okay, like any entrepreneur, I don't want to say that we want to be at this level of training service. Training service is a baby which sometimes spoiled, sometimes well behaved, sometimes mature. What we would like to see as entrepreneurs is to create value for the people who are working with us. So training sideways is part of an entire organization called AVM Corporate, which has two wings, the AVM Entertainment Wing and the Training Wing. So we are part of a mothership and what we are doing is for the mothership. We want the mothership as well as the constituents of entertainment and training to go to a place, in 10 years time, I want this idea to be used by a lot more people and a lot more such organization should come. We should have training sideways happening in every town in India. It need not be training sideways doing it. We want this idea to multiply wherever and people believing that alternate training methodologies and art based management is the way to go. And yes, we are the pioneers in that and definitely if we we are going to incubate and make 20 other training sideways happen, we'll definitely be sitting on top of the table. So my dream for 10 years is I want to create value to my investors, to my stakeholders, which is all of us, and the people who are working with us and our clients in such a way that monetarily, we should be a company which is should not be living on day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month survival. More importantly, it's a company which should get into providing value for customers and not just training for customers. So I want to be part of the customer's problem and transform his work itself. Rather than saying, I'm going to take two facets of your training and I'm going to do the training for you. I should become a business partner, a consulting partner for my organization as part of the business strategy, business transformation itself, not just human resource transformation, which today we are focusing on. I want to get into business transformation of the customers, which I believe training can do because uh, that is where the big market is and that's where a visionary and entrepreneur can actually see value where I'll tell him that I'm going to help you do your business better. Today I'm going to say how to use your person better, how to use your personnel better. I want to get into transforming his business as well. In 10 years time, this company should be known as a business transformation organization with still having the backdrop of 
making people contributive, make, making people happy and making people participative. See, you don't plan a business uh, thinking about what are the pitfalls. You plan a business thinking on what are the benefits. So if the moment you start a business and you think of the 10 ways it's going to fail, you already failed. Every business if you start, I, can, I myself can tell you 20 reasons why we should not be in this business. But you don't start with that. You start with saying that what are the, the benefits of this business. See, entrepreneurship is as much social as much as selfish. When I say selfish, it's, you should blindly believe what you're doing. Unless you do it, you can't go and impress somebody else you're going to convince. So the, if I, I'm not big enough to advise people, but what I can say is, if you believe in an idea, don't just, there are two things you must remember. Work on that idea. Don't just go by a thought and leave it. Work on it. See the business implications of it. What is the investment needed? What is the turnaround time needed? What is the invest? What are the impacts needed? Who are the key stakeholders? What is your three-year plan? What is your five-year plan? What is your eight-year plan? Have that plan in mind. May not work, but have the plan in mind. But when you go and meet people outside, make them believe that you are a magnetic personality who really believes this is the business which is going to transform his life or her life. That blind belief, that belief should not come because you want to say it. You should really believe it. If you are not convinced about it, don't even talk about it to others, other people. Be convinced. You should be a brand ambassador for your business. You may be the entrepreneur, you may be a working class person. Today, I'm the... I'm a founder of this organization, but when I go and meet a person, I'm as much a marketing guy as my colleague. And when you leave a person after the meeting, they should be like, wow, is that what belief can do to a person? Is what they should leave with. The business may not come today, it will come eventually. Don't go for a business saying that I'm going to meet that guy so that I can get the business right now. That's not the attitude. That becomes mercenary. That becomes commercialization. Go sell your idea. Make him believe that your idea is a real idea. Once you sell that plant to make him, see we are in the space of mind share buying. We are not in the space of business buying. We are in the mind space, mind share buying. If I buy the mind share of my prospective client or my stakeholder, eventually he'll pay the money to me. So buy his mind share, make him be an evangelist for your thought. Spread it around, make everybody else, make, make everybody else you meet, impact them in a way, such a way that when they go out, they become evangelists for your business. Eventually a business come. Don't go to every guy thinking that he's the guy who's going to give you business. You are in the business of buying mind share. Business will come eventually. That's the key thing. And for that you must truly believe that your business is actually making sense to the other guy as well, not just to you. That is the most important thing as an entrepreneur. I think um, uh, today entrepreneurships are happening much more than it happened before because of the, I would like to say that it's because of the Western influence. We see a lot of success studies, stories was happening in the West much more than here and we get inspired and do it, which is great. That collaboration is important. But slowly our corporates are becoming Western mindset oriented, which is a great thing. But what you said is very, very important because today the backbone of a, of a, of, of a country is its government and its society. Now government doesn't play an active part in, in entrepreneurship. It's private people who run incubation cells and entrepreneurship cells and they're doing it. All top companies today encourage entrepreneurs. All top multinationals or even Indian companies, and name it, they encourage. They have sales to encourage entrepreneurship. Government should also start doing it a lot more. Start giving subsidies and taxes. You know, today when you talk about service tax and things like that, all of us pay the same service tax. But for an entrepreneur, I think there should be different rules in terms of taxing and benefits and things like that. Till he comes to a certain level. I'm not asking for monetary benefits from the company. I'm just saying that make it easier for us. Make it easier for us to enter. Similarly, society. Society should believe that it starts from homes. Your families should believe if your son or daughter has an idea which is not going becoming a doctor or going becoming an engineer. Hey, maybe he's got an idea or she's got an idea. Listen to him or her. Don't say, hey, no, no, first finish your do work somewhere and come back and do it. No. I think it starts with now more than the government, it's the families, families around you. Anybody can become an entrepreneur. You don't have to be 21 to become, you can be 45 years old become an entrepreneur. When the thought comes in you, the thought comes very strongly, it becomes manic in your life. People around you, your immediate family and friends probably more important family, they should support you. They don't have to blindly encourage you, they must be able to listen to you and say, hey, let's think about it, encourage. Some great entrepreneurs are gone because the society around them don't, doesn't let them say, hey, they say, come on, chuck it, don't even, what at this age, why do you want to try this up? No, 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 you're too young for it, don't even try all these things. Go work in a top IT company, and go to America, earn dollars, come back, then we'll think about it. We are losing a generation of ideas and entrepreneurs because of this. But I'm thankful to say that it's not as bad as it sounds because the family side, yes. Society, family, bio, bano, please listen to this. I want you guys to encourage your brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers who are starting businesses after retirement and sons and daughters. Not just the younger people, it's the older people also. I, I know people who are 65 who want to start their own cooking business. Mothers who want to do catering. 
encourage them. There are mothers who are getting into painting and selling, you know, stained glass paintings and all. Encourage them. Encourage your mothers and parents, not just your uh, children. Listen to them. Maybe you have got an idea. Maybe you can help them. Completely listen to the idea. And then let's see, let the decision come later. Don't immediately say, oh, that's not worth it. So that's what I would like to appeal to my brethren, my sister and, and my fellow Indians. If you have a dream, don't let go of it, whatever happens. Just hold on to it. Believe in it. Even if you fail, it's beautiful. Having a dream is like falling in love. There's no point in not getting hurt. You will have to get hurt. And for you to get hurt, you have to put a lot of effort. You can't get hurt in love or in business unless you put the effort into it. So remember, forget the hurt in it. Remember the effort to it. Go, give your heart. Life is all about living with your heart or planning with your brains. So fall in love with the idea and and don't think the idea should be a mega billion dollar idea. It should be an idea which you should love. And it should be an idea which should be backed by sound logic as well. It starts as a spec, but build a sound logic around it because it's not about other people. It's for you yourself. You shouldn't fall into a well. Right? But when the dream comes, go full on. Try everything possible. The dream could be stupid. Don't listen to other people. So until you're convinced about your dream, don't go and talk to other people. That's very important. Convince yourself. Have the heart and the mind linked together about the dream and then talk about it because the moment you talk you're going to have 300 views from people and it's going to confuse you so that let it happen later That's all.